My Weird School, Book Number Nineteen. Doctor Carbles is losing his marbles. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pellot. Chapter Nine: How to Drive Grown-ups Crazy. Well, that whole protest thing was a dumb idea. Luckily, none of us got killed. We'd have to think up another way to get rid of Doctor Carbles. Remember how we got rid of Miss Todd? Ryan said the next morning while we were putting our backpacks away. Miss Todd was a substitute teacher at our school. She tried to murder Miss Daisy and take her job, but we caught her. Miss Todd was odd. Yeah, we drove her crazy. I said. Then we have to drive Doctor Carbles crazy," said Michael. "If there's one thing I'm good at, it's driving grown-ups crazy. There are lots of ways to do that. One way is to say everything they say right after they say it. That's a good one. Sometimes I ask my parents." Why, over and over again, it drives them nuts. But it was Neil the nude kid who had the greatest idea in the history of the world. We should steal Doctor Carbell's toupee, Neil said. Yeah, Mister Klutz told us that if anybody ever found out Doctor Carbell's was bald, it would drive him crazy. Neil's idea was genius. He should be in the gifted and talented program. The only problem was, how are we going to steal Doctor Carbell's toupee? We could sneak into his house in the middle of night and rip it off his head. Suggested Michael. Nah, Ryan said. He probably has an electric fence and a moat around his house. We could rent a giant wind machine and blow it off his head. Suggested Michael. You can rent anything. Nah, Ryan said. It costs a lot of money to rent a giant wind machine. That's when I got the greatest idea in the history of the world. Hey, I said. Every day after lunch, Doctor Carbels stands outside and watches us march around the playground. Right? Yeah, Michael said. So what? Well, he has a fishing pole in his office. I told the guys. We could hang the fishing pole out the second floor window and go fishing for toupee. You're a genius, Neil the nude kid told me. I should get the Nobel Prize. That's a prize they give out to people who don't have bells. During lunch, me and Neil snuck out of the vomitorium. We slinked around the halls like secret agents. Nobody was around. All the teachers must have been eating in the teachers' lounge. I opened the door to Doctor Carbels's office. It was empty. Perfect. I grabbed the fishing pole and we tore out of there. We ran up the stairs to the second floor. I handed Neil the pole and opened a window. We peeked out. Doctor Carbels was right below us, standing there with his bullhorn. The kids were just starting to march out of the vomitorium. Left, right, Doctor Carbels yelled at the kids. "March, you weasels! This is gonna be great!" Neil giggled as he stuck the fishing pole out the window. He'll go crazy once we steal his toupee. Okay, I told Neil. Drop the hook now. Neil lowered the line until the hook was hanging right above Doctor Carbels's head. A little to the left, I told Neil. Lower. Neil was having a hard time hooking the toupee. My arms are getting tired, Neil said. I grabbed the pole. Neil helped me guide the hook. It was not easy. The hook kept blowing around. Any nibbles yet? Neil asked. Nope, 
But right after I said that, I felt a little pull on the line. Hey, I think I got it. I started reeling in the toupee, but there was just one problem. It wouldn't come off Dr. Carbles' head, so I pulled harder. It's a big one, I told Neil. It's a fighter. I kept tugging on the fishing pole, but the toupee just wouldn't budge. It must be glued on good, Neil said. Maybe they took hair off other parts of his body and planted it on his head, I said. I saw that on a TV commercial once. That's disgusting, said Neil. Suddenly, Dr. Carbles grabbed his toupee and looked up at us. What's the meaning of this? he shouted. Uh-oh, I dropped the pole. It fell out the window and almost hit Dr. Carbles on the head. AJ, report to my office immediately, he hollered. Ooh, went all the kids on the playground. That's it. My life was over. I would have to move to Antarctica and live with the penguins. Chapter 10. The Torture Room When I got to Dr. Carbles' office, he told me to sit in the chair next to his desk. Then he just stared at me. He looked really mad. Are you going to be frank? I asked. He didn't say anything. He pulled down the shades to make the room dark. Then he turned on his desk lamp and pointed the light on me. Who told you I wear a toupee, AJ? asked Dr. Carbles. Huh? Who told you? I was pretty sure I had the right to remain silent. I saw that on a TV show once. Besides, I was too scared to say anything. The teachers are plotting against me, aren't they? Dr. Carbles said. I don't trust them. I see the way they look at me. They hate me. Everybody hates me. I kept my mouth shut. If you don't say anything, you can't say anything dumb. Did Mr. Docker tell you about my toupee? asked Dr. Carbles. Or was it Miss Lazar? You can tell me, AJ. His face was right next to mine. His breath smelled like rotten eggs. I was shaking. I thought I was going to die. Cat got your tongue, eh? Dr. Kerbals asked. Well, I have ways to make you talk. Oh, no. He was going to torture me. Here, I want you to read this, said Dr. Kerbals. What is it? I asked. A book. A book? I exclaimed. With words? That's right, Dr. Carbles said. Read it. Reading is boring, I told him. Read it, he shouted. Every word, cover to cover. Let's go, I don't have all day. Sweat was rolling down my face. No, no, I cried. Not reading anything but that. Okay, I'll talk, I'll talk. Smart boy, Dr. Carbles said, taking the book away. I knew you'd see it my way. It was Mr. Klutz, I admitted. I went over to his house. He told me about your toupee. He told me about the skateboarding team. He told me he called you Walrus Face. He told me everything. Klutz, eh? sneered Dr. Carbles. Klutz told you that? Oh, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him good. Nobody calls me Walrus Face and gets away with it. Please don't tell Mr. Klutz I told you. I promised him I wouldn't tell. Please, Frank. Get out of here, Dr. Carbles hollered. And stop calling me Frank or I'll get the summer reading list. I ran out of his office as fast as I could. Chapter 11. The Big Skate Off When I got to school the next morning, I could hear the sound of hammering. It was coming from the gym. 
That was weird. I went over to the gym and opened the door. You'll never believe in a million hundred years what I saw. Five guys in overalls were building a half pipe right there in the gym. Wow! We were going to go skateboarding in phys ed. The phys ed teacher, Miss Mall, is off the wall. She usually has us juggle scarves and balance feathers on our fingers, but we were finally going to do something cool. We were going to skateboard. It was the greatest day of my life. Me and the guys were so excited we could hardly stand it. When do we go to phys ed? We kept asking Miss Daisy. I don't know," said Miss Daisy, who doesn't know anything. Finally, at the end of the day, Mrs. Patty made an announcement over the loudspeaker. She said that everybody had to report to the gym. "Hooray!" all the boys yelled. Miss Daisy had to keep telling us to stop running the whole way there. When we got there, the half pipe was finished. And Doctor Kerbal was standing in front of it. He was holding a skateboard. Where's Miss Mall? I asked. Are we going to skateboard in phys ed? No! Shouted Doctor Kerbal's. This half pipe isn't for you. It's for me. Boo! Yelled all the boys. We were really mad as we sat down on the bleachers. But we didn't stay mad for long because you'll never believe who walked into the door at the other end of the gym. Nobody. If you walked into a door, it would hurt. But guess who walked into the doorway? It was Mr. Klutz, and he was holding a skateboard. Everybody cheered. Hooray for Mr. Klutz! We all shouted. Doctor Carbles and Mister Clutz stood facing each other at opposite sides of the gym. They looked like two gunslingers on one of those old Western TV shows, except they had skateboards instead of guns. Everybody got quiet. You could hear a pin drop. So we meet again, Clutz," said Doctor Carbles. "I thought you'd be too chicken to show up." I will outskate you any time," Mr. Clutz said. "You're going down, Walrus Face." "Oh snap!" Ryan whispered. "Mr. Clutz is gonna blow the doors off Doctor Carbles," I told the guys. Mr. Clutz and Doctor Carbles climbed up to the top of the half pipe. Doctor Carbles picked up his bullhorn. Finally, all the world will know who the best skateboarder is," he hollered. "Ha ha ha! Revenge will be sweet." We all started chanting, two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Klutz, Klutz, Klutz. Doctor Carbles and Mister Klutz dropped into the half pipe at the same time. Doctor Carbles did a vert bomb drop. Mr. Klutz did a combination inward heel flip outside board slide. Doctor Carbles did a pole jam. Mr. Klutz did a boomerang. It was awesome. Everybody in the gym was yelling and screaming their heads off. Even the teachers. Then, just as Doctor Carbles was doing a monkey flip jawbreaker, Mr. Klutz did a stale fish McTwist. They crashed into each other in midair. Doctor Carbles's toupee went flying off his head. The two of them landed together in a tangle of arms and legs. It was a real Kodak moment, and we got to see it live and in person. Oh, my leg! Moaned Doctor Carbles. Ouch! My head! Moaned Mister Klutz. The two of them were lying at the bottom of the half pipe, freaking out. Mrs. Cooney, the beautiful school nurse, came running over with a first aid kit. And you'll never believe in a million hundred years who walked in the gym at that exact moment. I'm not going to tell you.
Okay, okay, I'll tell you. It was Mrs. Haney, the superintendent of all the schools in the county. Carbles, she shouted. What's the meaning of this? Dr. Carbles looked at Mr. Klutz. Mr. Klutz looked at Mrs. Haney. Mrs. Haney looked at Dr. Carbles. Everybody was looking at each other. It's a half pipe, ma'am, Dr. Carbles said. I challenged Klutz to a little competition. You were hired to bring order and discipline to this school, Mrs. Haney yelled. I didn't bring you here so you could build a half poop and ride a skateboard. But, 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 said Dr. Carbles. Carbles, shouted Mrs. Haney. You're fired. Dr. Carbles limped out of the gym, sobbing. What a crybaby. Chapter 12 you can rent anything. Watch out! Somebody screamed. It was the day before Thanksgiving. Some crazy lunatic dressed like a pilgrim was tearing down the sidewalk on a skateboard. He must have built up too much speed. The guy was weaving around kids totally out of control. Run for your lives! Somebody shouted. The skateboard must have hit a crack in the sidewalk because the next thing anybody knew, the pilgrim went flying through the air like a superhero. Kids were diving out of the way. Dogs were running as fast as they could. The skateboarding pilgrim crash landed in the bushes in front of the school. You'll never believe in a million hundred years who it was. It was Mr. Klutz. Good morning, Mr. Klutz, said Mrs. Cooney as she walked past. Good morning, Mrs. Cooney, he replied. Beautiful day, isn't it? Lovely. Mr. Klutz got up, brushed himself off, and walked up the front steps. Like it was totally normal to skateboard to school, dressed as a pilgrim and crash headfirst into the bushes. Everybody clapped and cheered when we realized Mr. Klutz had been hired to be our principal again. No more marching, no more uniforms, no more Dr. Carbles. It was the best day in the history of the world. In the afternoon, we were called down to the all-purpose room for an assembly. Mr. Klutz went up on the stage and everybody gave him a standing ovation. Well, I have good news and bad news, Mr. Klutz told us. The bad news is that even though you all made beautiful Thanksgiving displays, I can't marry a turkey like I promised. What happened to Gobbles? Emily asked. I'm having her for dinner tomorrow, Mr. Klutz said. What's the good news? I shouted. You'll see. Mr. Klutz went behind the curtain. You'll never believe in a million hundred years what he brought out with him. A live pig! I'm going to marry this pig instead, he told us. Everybody started cheering and stamping their feet. Where did you get a pig? yelled Ryan. From rent a pig, Mr. Klutz said. You can rent anything, you know. Mrs. Rupee came out on stage with a book. She was wearing a man's suit and tie. It's Mrs. Rupee, everybody yelled. I'm not Mrs. Rupee, said Mrs. Rupee. I'm the Justice of the Peace. Mr. Klutz, do you take this pig to be your wife, to love, honor, and cherish till death do you part? I do, said Mr. Klutz. Pig, do you take Mr. Klutz to be your husband in sickness and in health till death do you part? Oink, said the pig. This is so romantic, Andrea whispered. I now pronounce you man and wife, said Mrs. Rupee. Mr. Klutz, you may kiss the pig. Mr. Klutz bent down and kissed the pig right on the lips. Ew, disgusting. That was the second time I saw Mr. Klutz kiss a pig. He must really love pigs. 
After the assembly, we went back to Miss Daisy's class to get ready for dismissal. She wished us a happy Thanksgiving and made us go around in a circle to say what we were thankful for. I'm thankful that Mr. Klutz is back," said Andrea. "I'm thankful that Dr. Kerbels is gone," said Michael. The three o'clock bell rang. "What are you thankful for, A.J.?" asked Miss Daisy. "I'm thankful that we don't have school for four more days," I said. Then I ran out of there. Maybe Dr. Kerbels will take a chill pill and get his job back. Maybe we'll be allowed to keep the half pipe and go skateboarding in phys ed. Maybe Mr. Klutz and the pig will go on a honeymoon and live happily ever after. Maybe Mr. and Mrs. Klutz will get divorced because Mr. Klutz is always kissing pigs and marrying them. Maybe hair. Will stop growing out of Mr. Klutz's nose and back on the top of his head, where it belongs. Maybe my weird school will become more like a normal school, but it won't be easy.